Hello and welcome to session 19 of our course on quality control and improvement with Minitab. So, uh, I am Professor Indrajit Mukherjee from Shailesh Jameta School of Management, IIT Bombay. So, earlier session what we have done is that we have uh, talked about hypothesis testing and in that case uh, how to compare the uh, uh, sample observations with the population uh, mean uh, uh, some values whether we can compare that one we, we can make a judgment out of that that means uh, whether the mean is this value or not uh, uh, is it equal or not equals to conditions like that that is the simplest way we can explain hypothesis testing and we have used a z test and we have used a t test uh, condition to uh, uh, satisfy that one and we have also seen that uh, if underlying assumptions of normal distribution fails in that case what is to be done, what conversion we can do like box cox transformation we have seen and then we do the hypothesis testing or the converted data like that or otherwise we go for non-parametric test that we also seen like that and uh, that considers median and ranking uh, concept and in based on that we get the p values and we make interpretation p is less than 0 0.05 uh, we go for the alternate hypothesis and p if it is if it is more than 0 0.05 less than equals to if it is greater than that one so in that case we cannot reject the null so that is the condition based on which we make analysis and so uh, now what we will do is that we will go to a specific test which is known as two sample t test which is very relevant to our quality concept and that can be considered as the starting point of experimentation ok. So, uh, this concept I will give over here the statistical concept that is used to, uh, to do this testing and how it is to be done in Minitab like that. So, here uh, this problem that I am highlighting over here is that uh, there are two different catalysts uh, that is used uh, and then um, in a chemical process and in that case uh, the experimenter is interested in to know that whether to use catalyst A or catalyst B which improves the yield basically. So, I have a data observation over here uh, which is from catalyst A when I have used catalyst A what was the yield. So, this is the percentage yield that was reported like that and this is catalyst B which was uh, when I have used catalyst B and the sample observations that I have and what is the uh, yield percentage that is measured over here. I want to check whether the in, in population this mu 1 average that we are getting over here and mu 2 average whether they are same whether they are different like that. So, I have x 1 observations over here x 1 bar uh, a observations let us say and x b bar also this is the average value that we are getting out of the samples over here. We can have standard deviation of a we can also get standard deviation of b uh, that information also we can get from this data observation that we have. Okay. Now, I have to I have to make a judgment whether my null hypothesis will be over here mu 1 equals to mu 2 or mu 1 not equals to mu 2 if I am considering both sided test like that. Okay. So, null hypothesis that was considered is mu 1 and mu 2 mu 1 not equals to mu 2 that is the other condition that I am considering over here. So, so while doing this test, so what we do is that we use as a uh, we use a specific test statistic that is known as T. Uh, T test statistic over here. So, we will make a calculated value that will be calculated this is T 0 what you see over here and that will be calculated based on this average value what you see. So, it is written as y 1 over here we can write y a over here we can write y b over here instead of x a and x b we can write y a and y b like that. Uh, this is the outcome. So, I want to maximize my yield over here which catalyst to be used that is the uh, that is the thing I want to analyze over here. So, one is a and one is b. So, uh, so, if, the, if this difference is significantly different, so y 1 y a bar and y b bar. So, if this, this difference and this difference is close to 0, we can assume if they are close in that case, they are not much different. So, uh, my analysis should show the result should come out that hypothesis testing whenever I am doing that, if it is close to 0 in that case, uh, we expect that the null hypothesis cannot be rejected like that. If it is very different from 0, what is expected is that we should reject the null hypothesis like that. Okay. So, uh, that is the basic interpretation I am trying to make over here, but the state test statistics that is used over here this difference is calculated and then a pooled standard deviation is calculated and this n 1 information is number of observation over here and n 2 information is number of observation that is for catalyst b like that. So, we can write it as n a and n b like that number of observation while doing with catalyst a and number of observation that we have taken or sample observation that we have taken for catalyst b. This can be same this can be different here it is same, but it can be different also and then we calculate a pooled standard deviation for the uh, uh, for the analysis over here which is given as n 1 or n a minus 1 I, I, I can consider s a over here and this can be n, n b 
and S P like this square of this, this is N A N B like that minus 2 like that. So, we can calculate this pooled standard revision because all information is known over here. This pooled standard revision will be placed over here and based on that we will calculate a T 0 value which is known as uh, we can we can also say T calculated value like that. Then T tabulated value can also be seen because the degree of freedom is given over here and based on that and alpha level of significance for any hypothesis testing we have to assume some alpha level and we are assuming let us say 0.5 or 5 percent is the level of significance that we are assuming over here. And in this case uh, what we can do is that with a given level of alpha and degree of freedom over here that is N 1 plus uh, N A plus N B minus 2 over here what we can do is that we can get the value of tabulated uh, calculated value of T 0 over here and this can be compared with a tabulated value like that which depends on alpha and degree of freedom. So, that can be compared and based on that we can make a judgment. So, that was the old way and nowadays what we are doing is that we are seeing the p value what I told because of software interface we are getting p values any of the software will report the p values and based on that we can reject or accept the null hypothesis like that based on the uh, outcomes of p values like that ok. So, here also uh, when when I am doing this two sample t test to compare the means over here mu 1 equals to mu 2 or mu 1 mu not equals to mu 2 some assumptions are there. So, over here what is the assumption basic assumption is that the data that is coming from catalyst A and catalyst B both should follow normal distribution like that. So, normality assumption is there. So, normal assumptions is required for each individual observations that the each individual data sets that we are getting. So, this should follow normal distribution this should also follow normal distribution that is the uh, and this is coming with mu 1 one as a props process average this may be mu 2 or we can say mu a and mu b like that that also can be said like that. So, they are coming from normal distribution and also we are assuming that the data are independent. So, set of data over here with catalyst a that we have we have collected over here has nothing to do with the data set that is in catalyst b like that they are independent with each other. So, there is no uh, correlation that should exist between data set a and data set b like that or catalyst a with catalyst a and catalyst b like that. So, that check is also needs to be ensured over here. And then uh, what we can do is the third check that is required is that whether the variance over here. So, the SA uh, that if we have calculated over here can we estimate whether the variance of A is same as variance of B like that. So, this will uh, dictate what type of T statistics that we will use T statistics that we will use. And in case they are same one T statistics will be used if they are different another T statistics will be used with a given degree of freedom like that ok. So, that is given condition and you can see any books to understand uh, the basics on this two sample t test and the statistical uh, that is t statistics that is used like that. So, degree of freedom will change in case this varies like that. So, in case this is not this is not same in that case some different test uh, with different degree of freedom is required like that ok. Uh, and so, uh, for that uh, we need to do this check. So, normality 1 independent uh, independent testing that the, the data sets are independent and the variance is same or not that will also uh, considered over here. So, this data set I have in mini tab. So, I will try to do the test uh, as per the requirements like that. So, what I will do is that here you see that data set is in C4 and C5 column. What I will do is that I will go to stat uh, and uh, basic stat over here I want to check normality first. So, whether uh, I, I want to see whether catalyst A is normal or not data set that I am having I am using Anderson Darling test again uh, for the data set A and I will click ok over here. So, when I give ok what I see is that uh, the p value that is reported over here is around 0.516. So, data seems to be normal. So, there is no problem. So, I can close this one and similarly I can do for uh, second for uh, normality test for data set B catalyst B over here and I do the same testing over here and then for catalyst B what I get is that again I get a p value which is more than 0 0.05. So, the here also normality assumption is not violated and uh, then what we can do is that whether they are independent or not catalyst A and catalyst B what we can do is that we can see the correlation coefficient over here. So, correlation can be checked over here for catalyst A and catalyst B over here and uh, options is that uh, I can use Pearson correlation and then uh, results what I can do is that correlation matrix. So, this can be reported over here and I click ok. So, in this case uh, what we get is that uh, near perfect relationship what we are getting over here. So, correlation uh, of this data set sorry this this analysis over here I have done some mistakes. So, I, I will change this correlation over here. So, catalyst A and catalyst B that is that is of important for us. When I do that one what I see is that uh, this is uh, R coefficient is over here. So, these values are 0 0.3 approximately 0 0.3 negative negative correlation what it is showing and uh, maybe p value uh, 
we can we can also check the p values for this so we can go to stat and again basic statistics like that correlation analysis over here so options what we can give is that uh, store correlation matrix like that and graphs results so we can pairwise correlation matrix and then we can see okay we can give and then what we can see is that p value will be reported over here so if you see the p values over here and i am copying as a picture and I will paste it let us say in Excel so that it is visible uh, also. So let me just paste this one to show you what is the correlation that is uh, coming out to be between catalyst A and catalyst B. So uh, let me just click this one and uh, let us paste the uh, whatever information we have got. So over here what you see is that uh, p value is uh, greater than 0 0.05 so that means catalyst A and catalyst B. Uh, there is no significant correlation that exists between catalyst and the data set that I have got in sample 1 and sample 2. So, they are not so uh, correlation also can be checked by Pearson correlation we have discussed like that and that whether they are significantly correlated or they are not significantly correlated that also can be seen with a p values that is reported over here and it says that p value is more than 0 0.05 will indicate that there is no uh, there is no uh, statistically significant correlation that exists if it is less than 0 0.05 significant correlation will will be uh, uh, then we can say that there is a significant correlation. So, data seems to be independent over here. So, the second second condition also holds. So, in this case third condition what we have to do is that whether the variance is same or not. So, I will do a two variance test like that two variance test over here. So, uh, both samples are in one column no both samples are in different columns. So, sample number one I will give catalyst A sample as catalyst B. So, you can change this order like that sample 1, sample 2 there is no uh, you can put it any anywhere you can put catalyst A and catalyst B like that. So, then you go to options over here. So, uh, because I have checked normality. So, I will use test and confidence interval based on normal distribution over here. So, what I want to check whether the variance is same like that. So, I can use variance testing over here. I can also, also use standard uh, standard deviation testing over here. I am using variance test let us say. So, in this case whether the ratio uh, whether the variance is same or not same that I want to check over here. So, ratio not equals to uh, hypothesis ratio over here. So, whether there uh, so both sided test I am doing over here is assuming normal distribution. So, in this case if I give ok and then what I can see is that uh, I can see summary plots like that. I can also see results like that all the results are given over here. So, this is by default and I click ok over here and what I get is that uh, I will get a uh, f statistics over here f statistic and correspondingly I will get a uh, uh, here I can copy this as an image and then I can paste it over here. So, I can remove this one now and I can show you this one uh, what is the results outcome over here. So, if you see the results over here f f statistic was used over here method is f that is mentioned over here and the statistic value is 0.64. And uh, in this case, if the ratio is very close to 1, I am checking whether the variance is uh, or sigma 1 square by sigma 2 square is equals to ratio is equals to 1, not equals to 1. So, S1 square by S2 square that ratio will be taken and based on that what, what comes out to is 0.64 which is close to 1 basically and that is confirmed also that uh, the p value is not significant over here. So, if p value is not significant that means the variance is same basically. When variance is same I will go for that condition while doing the hypothesis testing or two sample t test like that. So, in this case in catalyst what we have seen is that it follows individual follows normal then their data is independent like that and also the variance of A and variance of B are same in population basically. So, then what I will do is that stat I will go to stat basic stat and two sample t test. Now, I will apply the two sample t test over here. So, when I apply two sample t test like that it will ask are they in one column or they are in different column they are in own column we have mentioned. So, all are in different columns. So, catalyst A and catalyst B we are trying to do and then you go to options and then you assume equal variance. So, this you have to click over here assume equal variance 95 percent is the confidence band that we are using every time. So, that is by default and uh, difference not equals to condition we want to check catalyst A or catalyst B whichever is giving me uh, is the means are different or not. So, both sided test I am doing over here. So, in this case uh, I will give ok and then box plot can also be seen over here box plot over here and I click ok. What will happen is that I will get some values over here and I will get a corresponding uh, values over here. So, if I copy this one and then in that case what will happen is that I will I will I can paste this one over here. So, this is already done. So, we can just enhance this 
feasibility for enhancing the visibility. So, in this case when we have done the two sample t test what what the value that we are getting is 0 0.729 is the p value and that is more than uh, what is uh, uh, what is recommended value of 0 0.05. So, I cannot reject the null hypothesis. So, in this case mu 1 equals to mu 2 that means when I am using catalyst A and catalyst B the means are not differing much statistically basically ok. So, whichever catalyst you use the overall mean is remain same. So, in this case uh, whatever improvement may be with a new catalyst that you have developed that is B is not giving you higher higher yield as compared to catalyst A. So, we can retain the catalyst A like that until unless we have enough evidence that this is effective uh, we will catalyst some new catalyst is effective we will not not go ahead and say that uh, uh, we, we will not make claims like that catalyst B is uh, effective as compared to A. So, that is this uh, this type of testing like a drug is effective or not like that. So, with the uh, original drug we do the testing and we calculate what is the effectiveness of the drug uh, with some measures like that and with a second drug which is the uh, new drug that you have developed whether it is giving you better efficiency as compared to drug A like that that can be tested using this type of two sample t test like that ok. So, what is required when we when I am doing a two sample t test is that uh, all these assumptions needs to be satisfied over here all these assumptions needs to be satisfied and uh, but if this assumption fails if this assumption fails uh, one option is that conversion of the data set like what we have mentioned like that uh, uh, we convert it to normality and then do the testing like that and uh, uh, and uh, both the data set has to be converted. So, in that case you have to keep in mind like that because uh, to make a fair comparison between the two data set like that ok. So, uh, and uh, another option is that another option is that non parametric testing. So, I have a non parametric option which is known as man witness test in case you do not want to go about it because the assumption fails. So, I, I want to uh, assure big, but this test are so robust I, 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 I can assure you that even if some deviation happens small deviation to moderate deviation happens in that case the conclusion will be more or less same with non parametric like that. So, I, I will use a man witness test which is provided by Minitab uh, also given in Minitab and that is the recommended one when when the assumption fails and you do not want to go with assumption. So, in that case I, I will go directly to non parametric testing over here. So, man witness test I will do and in this case median again the median whenever I am going for non parametric median value is recommended as compared to mean over here. So, first sample is in catalyst A and second sample is catalyst B let us assume that a distribution fails assumption fails I am, I am checking not equals to condition over here. So, I am doing uh, and if I click ok over here. So, what will happen is that you will get a W statistics over here and you will get a value uh, of p value over here. So, that will be reported like that here also p value is reported. So, here also we will get some p values like that ok. W is the statistics that is uh, man witness statistics that we are we are we are getting over here and uh, this p value indicates that p is more than 0 0.05. So, indicates that medians are not different over here. So, these are the difference of medians like that medians are not different over here. So, basically uh, conclusion is that both the drugs are equally effective like that, that there is no uh, one cannot give higher yield as compared to the other one. So, percentage yield improvement is not much significant statistically significant what we have done. So, catalyst A yield is same as in population is same as catalyst B. So, with one sample information uh, uh, let us say over here what we have. So, we have uh, uh, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 observations like that for a for a given catalyst and another 8 observations on this side. So, uh, at the degree of freedom you see 14. So, n 1 plus n 2 minus 2 that will be 14 like that. So, that degree of freedom is used over here and the corresponding p value says that uh, there is no difference between catalyst A and catalyst B like that ok. So, we can have different examples over here like uh, this is one example taken again from Montgomery's design of experiment book where uh, some cement formulation is checked. So, one is modified one and one is unmodified unmodified is the original formulation modified is the new formulation of cement that is there and we want to check and do the two sample t test and want to confirm uh, that whether they are different or whether they are same like that. So, what we will do is that again we will do the basic statistics testing over here. So, I want to check two sided test let us say. So, in this case what I will do is that first I will check the normality. So, I will check uh, for modified motor is it normal. So, and the data set says that uh, when, I, when I do the first testing over here p value is 0 0.388. So, it is normal. So, second data set what I will do is that second we will do the uh, same normality testing and instead of modified I will use unmodified over here and check the normality uh, measures over here. 
and what I am observing over here p value is 0 0.9 approximately that also indicates that unmodified motor data that we have is also in population will be normal. And then uh, what we can do is that uh, so, first assumption is gone, Sen then second assumption what we can do is that basic statistics in that case correlation we can check. So, modified one and unmodified one. So, I will click ok over here and I will go to the p value that is coming over here and the p value observed is 0.554. So, I am not converting, I am not taking the. So, uh, this also indicates that modified and unmodified the correlation is about 0.2. So, I told you that thumb, thumb rule is that approximately more than 0.7 will be significantly different like a significant correlation exists like that, but we have a p value p value testing for that. So, we have a p value hypothesis testing measures over here. So, that will confirm that there is no uh, correlation between the two uh, data set that we are having modified and unmodified they are independent data observation over here ok. So, uh, the final testing that we have to do is that whether they are same whether the variance is same or not. So, I do a two variance test and uh, I will go for this two variance test over here. So, one is modified one is unmodified. So, I will go to options over here 95 percent confidence level we will take over here and this is sample one variance and sample two variance. So, I am doing two sided test and I will click this option because normality assumptions we are making and we have also cross checked that one. So, I will click ok and then uh, I will click ok over here. So, what will happen is that uh, I will get a variance test over here and F test indicates uh, that there is no difference. So, F test if, if I can take this one and I take it to excel. So, uh, the values that we are getting over here is uh, F test for the modified and unmodified cement uh, that means variance testing that we are doing for the two data set. So, p value is 0.478 and that indicates that basically the variance is uh, same or the ratio of variance is close to 1 and that is not different from 1 like that. So, that can be confirmed from here. And uh, so, we can go. So, every check is done over here. So, first test, second test and third test is satisfactory. Then what we can do is that we go to basic statistics to sample t test and then we want to check whether modified cement is uh, different from unmodified one. So, we can also do one sided test like that. So, if I change the condition we can do which is higher than which one. So, uh, that uh, if it is different that can also be checked by the results itself. So, I, if, if I take equals to condition also we can we can do that. So, uh, if they are significantly different like that. So, in this case what we will do I will click ok and uh, after the uh, test statistics what we are getting over here. So, this can be seen same test statistics what we have got over here. So, this is uh, catalyst 1 and catalyst 2 and for this what we are getting is that uh, let us go back to this analysis over here. So, this I can copy this uh, and place it over here. So, let me place it over here and we can see uh, whether the modified and unmodified are different or not. So, here what we see is that p value is 0 0.042 that means what p value is less than 0 0.05 that means there is a difference between these two values that we are we are getting over here. So, that means one mean is different from the other mean. So, modified motor and unmodified motor formulation. So, let us go to the mean which is different from which one. So, let us go to this and we have confirmed that there is significant difference between these two. So, we can place it like that and paste it over here and we can see uh, enlarge this one and see which is different from which one. So, we have seen that p value indicates that they are different. Now, modified motor is giving me a strength of 16.76 and unmodified is giving me a mean strength of 17.04 like that. So, unmodified is giving you hard strength as compared to modified motor over here and they are significantly different statistically over here. Okay. So, if you have to choose between mod modified motor and unmodified motor I will because strength over here what is measured in this data set. Uh, okay. So, uh, tensile strength let us say tensile strength is measured over here which is the given condition. So, uh, uh, so, in this case whichever strength is higher I will go for that. So, unmodified where the results indicate that unmodified is giving me average which is higher than the modified one and they are statistically different basically what which was proved by this p value over here. So, if you have to implement which formulation to be adopted in this case I will go for the unmodified or old formulation like that. I will not go for the modified formulation or the motor that is next one because that is giving me lower strength as compared to the unmodified motor. So, in a population at population level what we can see is that unmodified one is giving me higher strength as compared to modified motor over here ok. So, that is the physical interpretation we can take out of this. We can take another example like what is given over here arsenic content in phonics whether it is different from Arizona arsenic content like that this is another example where we can see whether 
uh, which test to adopt like that. So, in this case what we can see is that whether the uh, basic assumptions holds true or not. So, in this case we will go for conics and let us try to do the testing over here. So, it is just on the line that means uh, you see p value is exactly equals to 0 0.05. So, we may consider that this is uh, not greater than this one. So, uh, this assumptions holds like that. If I go to arsenic in uh, other other condition like that, so I will go to basic status normal normality test and in this case I will take the arsenic in Arizona and try to do this test over here. So, here also we see that the conditions are satisfactory over here and uh, we can we can we can assume that normality assumption is not violated as such. So, then we go to the basic statistics and correlation we can check between these two data set uh, arsenic 1 and arsenic of Arizona phonics and Arizona. Then we can test the p values over here and uh, what we see over here p value is also not significant that means there is no high correlation between these two data set that means they are independent data set what we are using. The p value is coming out to be I am not pasting it into uh, our uh, so, uh, otherwise we can we can just confirm that one and paste it over here. So, if I if I remove this observation from here and I see the Arizona case and the pair uh, this Pearson correlation which is coming out to be 0.535. So, pair co this pair pier Pearson correlation is coming out to be 0.535. P value is more than 0 0.05. So, nothing significant correlation there and it is correlation you can see is minus uh, uh, 224 and uh, anything more than 0.7 I told should be significant, but here uh, minus 2 to 4. So, in this case it, it should not come out to be significant over here. So, that is what is reflected over here in the p value. So, 0.535 uh, that is the value we are getting. So, uh, so what we have seen is that uh, that uh, uh, whenever uh, I am considering over here these examples. So, they are not uh, different uh, statistic uh, this this is independent. So, in that case the final test what we have to do is that uh, all checks we have done. So, two sample t test we will do and in this case only data set I will change. So, I will just take arsenic and then second one arsenic is Arizona. So, in options what we can do is that assume equal balance that condition is satisfactory 95 percent that I have taken uh, the difference should be equals to 0 and not equals to condition will be the uh, what I want to test like that. So, whether they are same or they are different and graphically we can see the box plot like that and I click ok over here all the th and in this case what happens is that you can see the box plot over here which will give you some idea about the data set. So, uh, in this case what you see th this is the average value this is the average value what you get. So, mean value is 12.9 over here and the mean over here what you see is around 27.5. So, there is a huge difference or slope you can understand that there is a huge slope between these two values over here. So, this should be prominent that means there is a uh, significant difference between location of the mean of this and this over here and the median value is also we can see a significant difference exists between these two. So, our hypothesis testing uh, should be able to identify this difference and it should reflect that there, there is a significant difference between the arsenic content uh, uh, over here as compared to the uh, Arizona content that we are getting mean values that we are getting over here. Box plot also reflects that fact. So, to prove that one we have to go to the uh, what is the value that we have got in uh, uh, in hypothesis testing p values over here. So, I am just copy pasting the p value analysis or hypothesis testing final hypothesis testing that we have results that we have got and I will paste it over here and I will just uh, enhance this one so that you can see and uh, what you see over here is the p value is 0 0.014 0 0.014 that is less than 0 0.05 that indicates that uh, and the t value is around minus 2.73 and this is uh, not close to 0 this is not close to 0. So, in that case our basic interpretation this p value is less than 0 0.05. So, in that case uh, what we can assure is that uh, these two values are uh, statistically different these two values are statistically different and in that case you need to be cautious when it is uh, content of arsenic. So, arsenic content over here you see 27. So, Arizona it is about 27 mean average value. So, it is much higher as compared to the uh, as compared to phonics. So, there is a statistical difference that exists between these two ok. So, uh, uh, this is uh, what we wanted to emphasize this is two sample t test where I can I can just uh, compare uh, before improvement and after after improvement. So, before we have implemented some uh, some measures. Uh, before we have done anything. So, what, what is the existing scenario? So, in quality what happens is that we, we try to see uh, existing scenario and then we do some improvement and then prove that this improvement has real effects and that is statistically different like that. So, first uh, phase of experimentation is that 
at one condition is it different from a second condition like that. So, you as second condition improve the improve the CTQ uh, values like that whatever is my target values like that whether it is whether, whether any improvement has happened or not. So, to prove improvement happened or not happened uh, what is required is that we need to do uh, this type of hypothesis testing and two sample t test is the uh, most uh, important uh, hypothesis testing which is used in quality basically ok. But that may be the starting point, but we need to know two sample t test and there are many other many other uh, lectures where you can see two sample t test like that. And uh, this is the way we do it in Minitab and the interpretation I have already told. So, up to this point, so we will discuss about pair t test also after this which is also very relevant where to use two sample t test, where to use pair t test like that, that difference we should know and based on that we can go ahead with the experimentation uh, where we do real improvements like that. So, we will discuss about analysis of variance concept like that which which is the uh, fundamental or pillars of design of experiments like that ok. We will stop over here and we will continue with pair t test in our next lecture ok. Thank you.